Hello there, and welcome to this uh, meta sort of show. I've not been recording much over the last week because work's been quite busy, and uh, I've idiotically decided to um, uh, take a bit of bit of rugby. So I was a bit battered after training on Thursday, so um, I haven't really got much done. But hopefully, I'm, I should get some some videos recorded today. Um, but anyway, we're talking about tournaments. These are the ones that are coming up. These are the ones that have been. So over the last weekend, we saw another five-round GT, Rob Symes, um square base GT, which uh, looked pretty cool. There was a tournament at Element Games. I can't include it, though, because it's just no data. Um, no use. I don't even know what... what you know, Tim Vass with Mordian Glory. No idea what he took. There's no... The event has lists set to hidden, so we can't we can't see who's got what or when or whatever. Or um, uh, Amelia Clark was there apparently. <laughs> um, uh, uh, presumably not that Amelia Clark. Um, uh, if it was, I mean that would be cool. Um, I mean, I can't, I can't find any. But anyway, so uh, um, I'm waffling. I haven't had enough coffee. But anyway, Sam Wackley, Wakely, Wackley, uh, managed to take out the win there. So well done to Sam. Um, quite a lot of three and O's actually uh, at the top of the. So it, it must have been like strength of schedule as to how they, <coughs> pardon me, how they ranked all that. Um. Anyway, we'll talk about that one last. So then we had uh, Return to the Old World. This is the second event that's been called Return to the Old World. Um, Warriors of Chaos took out the win. Warriors of Chaos are looking super strong at the moment. Britonia again got second. Britonia are looking pretty strong at the moment too. Uh, and there's a Skaven list that managed to win a couple of games. So we'll have a look at that one. Uh, see what they've got. So the Skaven has a Chieftain, a Grace here, Engineer, Plague Priest, Storm Vermin, Clan Rats, Clan Rats, Gisales, <coughs> Plague Monks, Water Lightning Cannon. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing. Uh, rattling Gun and a Water Fire Throw. So there's nothing. There's no like spam, is there? There's sort of a bit of everything. So well done, Jesse. Yeah, just. Uh, Maybe we're a little bit closer to uh, to cracking it. Screaming Bell, though, on the Grace here on the Screaming Bell. Um, that's interesting. Okay, so Kingdom of Returning, Green Knight. I think you're going to see the Green Knight a lot, to be honest. It's, it's really good. Um, it's really good because it basically doesn't die. Um, so it's really easy to keep it alive. Anyway, it's got a Duke, Virtue of Knightly Temper, which is uh, plus D3 attacks and hatred of all enemies uh you got a paladin with the virtue of duty and then you got the, another paladin on a bardic pegasus with the virtue of heroism that's the one that's killing blow and monster slayer so he's got he spent actually uh name characters are characters i don't know why they're included differently but it doesn't add up to more than a thousand so it's fine but he's not spent that much on characters really and we've got some errants knights of the realm knights of the realm pegasus knights trebuchet Oh. Three times... Oh, he's got three times three Pegasus Knights. There. Oh, so nine Pegasus Knights. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've said previously Pegasus Knights are like possibly the best unit in the Bretonia roster, so this is kind of confirming it a little bit, maybe. Uh, giving one of them like the banner of um, Frenzy would be although it does mean that they have to charge so they can be easily baited out it doesn't mean when they charge they slap so much harder uh, and apparently you can still deploy pegasus knights in a lance although it doesn't really work with the models um but yeah so that's that's the pretending list and then the chaos list is a scatru the merciless uh which is 
uh, Nurgle Lord. It doesn't actually say, but full full plate is the Lord thing. So it's a Lord on a dragon with an ogre blade and an always strikes first sort of thing. Enchanting aura basically means if you got strikes first, then you don't. You go at normal initiative, and if you haven't got strikes first, you're now striking last, which is effectively the same as strikes first, apart from up against stuff like elves, where they still get to strike first because their initiative is way better than yours anyway. So, <laughs> just so dumb. Um, uh, Kirex, bringer of fire, Zinch, level four wizard on foot. Yeah, that th this is this is a pretty standard combo of characters for chaos, I think. He's got four units of Warhounds. Ooh. Now, uh, presumably this event didn't do the you're only allowed three of one unit thing. Uh, but Warhounds, super cheap screens. They're brilliant. You know, if if that's legal, great. Then he's got the three Dragon Ogres. Uh, three units of Dragon Ogres. Sometimes you see... You, you sometimes see this where you get three Dragon Ogres and then two singles or three singles... Um, or three times three. Dragon Ogres are great, by the way. Um, and then you've got a giant, which is great. Exor the Unstoppable. Uh, we've got some Chaos Warriors. Michael Zinch with the Banner of Rage. So they're frenzied. Ooh, extra attack with Halberds. So strength 5 AP 1 attacks. Ooh, spicy. Um, I'm not really sure how that did so well, to be honest. Other than just destroying things. Just smashing face, basically. Good old smash face hammer. So anyway, well done, uh, Blue, for um, for taking out a win there. Uh, and well done to Jerry for getting 100%. Uh, unlucky Ken for... Uh, what have you got? Pegasus Knights, a big block of them, and Grail Knights, Bowman, Knights of the Realm, two blocks of them. Yeah... I mean, this heroism's there. Falconhorn, the Fred, the Mund is there. That's a great item. It's a wonderful item. Yeah, so that's that. That's that tournament. Uh, Chaos, Britannia, Britannia. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So, Old World RTT at Leighton Gaming. You've got uh, Troy Tran from Team Tran. Troy Tran. Tran from Team Tran. It's a tongue twister. Um, with Britonia taking out the win. And then John Carter with his Orc and Goblin tribes also managing to win three. Oh, Ogre's doing well. Well done, Zachary. That's fantastic. And um, oh, anything else I want to check out? No. <laughs> Uh, right, so Ogres, you've got Slaughtermaster, yes, Tyrant, yes, Iron Guts, yes, a little unit of Bulls, oh, we should wait for some points, some Trappers, it's got an Iron Blaster, I, I like the Iron Blaster, I think all the stuff that I don't have is the stuff that I want in my Ogres list, um, so, you know, Iron Blaster, Scrap Launchers, these things are all brilliant, Man Eaters are fantastic, um, yeah, they're just brilliant. Oh, giving money just the razor standard. That's really st and I oh that's oh oh yeah. So then they've basically got a four up save. They've got loads of attacks. Poisoned. Uh, razor standard is extra AP, isn't it? Or is it armor bane? I can't remember. But anyway, that's all. That's all. That's a very good unit. So yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a really nice list. It's a really nice list, and trappers are fantastic, like fantastic like bait troops. They're just great. Um, then we've got the old world RTT. Oh, then we've got uh, Orkin Goblins. This guy managed to win all three games, but came second. John, well done, John. Um, you got the Black Orc War Boss uh, with a Wyvern. Uh, so he's got his dragon basically. And he's got a level 4 wizard. He's got two level 4 wizards. Because 190 points for a level 4 wizard is ridiculous. Um, it's, it's so cheap. Um, and then you've got... I mean, they do they do die if you look at them funny. But still. Um, he's got a night goblin mob. Which is nice with some fanatics. So that's... Fanatics are great. He's got a big black orc mob. Again, pretty, pretty good. Split between shields and great weapons. 
absolutely can't fault that. Can't fault that. Basically, the way that Motley Crew works with the Blackhawks is as long as the shield guys outnumber the great weapon guys, you can basically use the shields for defensively and put all the great weapons in the front rank so that when they get into combat, they smash face with great weapons, but they still count as being shielded. It's it's insane, but, you know, whatever. Um, and you got Orc Boys. Uh, like, what? I don't know. So, hold on a minute. Let me just close the door. Oh, sorry about that. My son was just exploding next door, so um, oh, it was distracting me. Um, <coughs> so we've got some Orc Boar Boys. I really like them. I think they're great. He's got big ones, obviously. Uh, if you're just going to take one unit, of course you're going to do that. Uh, he's got some Squig Hoppers, which have a bit of utility, but they're not that good. Um, they're mostly good for like protecting flanks or getting in the way or protecting... like. War Machines, but he hasn't got any of those, so it's quite a quick list, actually, isn't it? Apart from the Black Orcs and the Night Goblins. The rest of it is quite quick, potentially. Huh. I wonder what... Does he put both the Night Goblins in the Night Goblin mob? The Shaman? Hmm, don't know, don't know. <coughs> so anyway, that's the, that's the Gobos and stuff. And then this one, Errantry Crusade list by Troy Tran of T Tran Team Tran. Troy Tran Team Tran. Anyway, um, you got a Duke, Virtue of Heroism. Yes, of course you're going to do that. Yeah, so it's either that or Knightly Temper, really, isn't it? But anyway, you've got Virtue of Heroism, so he's got Killing Blow and da -da, he's got a Lance, da -da, da -da, Royal Pegasus, Grommel Great Helm. We've we've seen this before. This is this is a pretty it's pretty standard Duke. Uh, and then we've got the Battle Standard Bearer with the Grail Veil on a Royal Pegasus. <coughs> Dawnstone, Virtue of the Penitent. And we've got level four Prophetess and uh, a Paladin. Uh, with the Crusader's Clarion. I don't know what that does, uh, but, um, okay. Uh, let's have a quick look. What does the Crusader's Clarion do? That sounds like it's going to be in the, um, in the sub-faction book, doesn't it? The Arcane Journal thing. Here we go, Arcane Journal. Uh, what's it do? Crusader's Clarion. A uh, Clarion is a horn. So, presumably a talisman or an enchanted item. Here we go. Ba 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 ba. Their mounts, mounts get plus one strength when they charge. Always? Or just the first round? Uh, that always. Okay. So, he's got the Grail Vow. Has he got some Grail Knights? No. No. Where does he go then? Don't know. Is he on a Pegasus? Because does that apply to... Is it just mounts? Ah, uh, mounted on a Britannian Warhorse only. Yes, so he can't give it to Pegasus. Huh. Interesting. <coughs> uh, has he got one of the units with a magic frenzy banner thing? No. Okay. I don't know what that's for, then. If it were me, if you were going to do that, you definitely want a unit where you've given them Frenzy, because then the mounts have Frenzy too, so they get extra attacks and, um, you know, extra attacks, strength for... <coughs> it is 25 points, so it's, you know, it's, um, it's an investment, isn't it? It's not a massive investment, but it's an investment, so, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so that's that. So again, well done, well done, Troy Tran, Dean Tran, by taking the win there. Some pretty stonking results there, 2 4 4 9. I mean, that considering that was his last game, you know, that'll have been up against somebody who's, you know, really good, getting nearly two and a half thousand points, like basically tabling the opponent in your final round on the top table. Troy definitely deserved the win there. <coughs> And then finally, we have a five-game uh, tournament uh, hosted by 
Rob Symes of Squarebase slash Honest Wargamer slash T4N or whatever the hell it was slash whatever. Um, slash slash slash. Anyway, um, uh, he's done another thing as well. Anyway, uh, shut up, Dan. Uh, so we've had Darren Watson. Interestingly, the person who won the tournament didn't get five wins. So it's a five game tournament, no five and no. That superb. Love that. Um, because it just means that the game's a bit closer. When every person in a five game tournament winning it gets a five and oh, you know, it's just you want you want there to be more draws. Like I want the person who wins a five game tournament to not get five wins, right? <coughs> that to me says the game is way more balanced than than people think. <coughs> Apart from the fact that Empire the two at the bottom are Empire. But again, I think there's a lot of choice in Empire, and I think it's just people haven't quite figured out what works for them yet. Whereas what works for Chaos and Dark Elves, for instance, is pretty obvious. So let's have a look at some of these lists, actually. Let's just uh, dive in. So we've got Dark Elves coming second. We've got Beastman, Jack Cooper, with Cropper, sorry, Beastman coming uh, third. Then we have James Lamin with High Elves coming fourth, fourth. and Richie Amphlett with Knights of the Shire from Knights of the Shire Gaming Club with Dwarven Mountain Holds coming in fifth, undefeated. <coughs> Dwarves are a great army for, you know, grinding out draws, though. So let's have a look, see what went on. So this is the one that was undefeated. Well, one of the two that were undefeated. However, this one placed a little bit down. He's got the Master Rune of Adamant, which is, I think, the Toughness 10 thing, and Shield Bearers. I love this as a as a combination. Like, I just think this is great. Um... Uh, this is this is so I'm trying to write a dwarf list and every single time I write a king it looks exactly like this. So <laughs> So um I I I really like that. Uh Rune Lord with three runes of spell breaking, really, really sensible choice. Um and it's got a battle standard bearer with a master rune of Grunye and the rune of battle. Uh I forget what the master rune of Grunye does. Uh good guys. Dwarves, dwarves, runic items. Uh, Master rune of Grunye. Unit carrying standards has a five at ward against. Oh, sick. And units within six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Um, and, you know, not too expensive for, like, giving more or less because i don't know what unit is going to go in possibly the long beards i'd imagine he's got a rune of battle there and a rune of battle so essentially with a standard uh two runes of battle battle standard mm, standard yeah so the plus four combat res for all of that in a unit which is nasty and he's got high breakers with the master end of hesitation. That's great. That basically shuts down something on charging. I can't remember what. Um, and then we've got some iron drakes. This is this is a pretty good, pretty good list. He's basically taken MSU iron drakes because he wants to troll hammer torpedo, which is basically a crack missile. Um, yeah. So he's he's done that. To, so he gets the torpedoes. He's got the iron breakers. He's got a gyrocopter full march blocking and just general shenanigans. He's got a bolt throw with a rune of skewering. The rune of skewering is like, you know, I, I think, again, this is one of those things that I think is pretty much mandatory in every single dwarf list is a bolt throw with a rune of skewering because it's not massively expensive. It's 20 points, so it's plus one strength. Uh, in addition, no armor save is allowed. So, you know, it just turns your bolt throw into like this massive death machine, you know, if it hits. He hasn't got an engineer, though, to let him... I don't know what an engineer does. It's either reroll hits or he can use the engineer's ballistic skill. But <coughs> that, I think, you know, for 75 points, that could easily get its points back in the game. That gets in the way. The Iron Break has just blunt a charge somewhere. Uh, what does the Master Rune of Hesitation actually do? Uh, engineering. No, no, no. Master Rune of Hesitation. 
do not count as having charge for the purposes of choosing which weapons to use or any special rules it may have. Okay, so you don't get like first stride. Uh, you, you you do get your initiative bonus um, because you do count as having charged, but it's like weapon choice and special rules. So mastering of hesitation is a bit of those. It's one of those ones where people argue that it basically means that they don't count as having charged. And it's like, well, no, they do, but not for the purposes of special rules or weapons. So no lances. No impact hits, you know, <clears throat> which is impact hits are a special rule. Uh, and that's one of those ones that gets argued about. So, like, oh, no, they still do impact hits. Huh? No, no, because it's a special rule. They don't get it. They don't count as having charged for the special rules. Um, special <laughs> Tournaments. Bah. Um, <laughs> then we've got some, uh, some long beards uh, with the Rune of Battle. Yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah, and a little MSU unit of five dwarf 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 warriors there. I don't know what the hell they're for, but they're there anyway. Well done them. So well done Richie for getting a decent result with dwarves. A very dwarfen result, really. Uh, just oh, I am not losing. <laughs> not bothered about winning. I bet we're not losing. Um, okay, James Lamin with high elves this is quite rare for high elves to do well especially at a five um i say especially we've only had two i can't really say especially that's not really there's not really a decent enough data to make that claim oh now i'm gonna sneeze i mean this is ridiculous um oh god um so we've got a prince on a dragon obviously with talisman of protection uh pure of heart don't know what that does what does that do uh, where's the high elves? Magic items. Is it a magic? No, it sounds like a virtue, doesn't it? Here we go. Free. Oh, it's not giving it blood of Kalador. Unless all friendly units within command range can use leadership characteristic. This character any unit is joined automatically passes any panic tests. I mean, they can re-roll panic tests anyway, because <coughs> pretty much all elves can. I suppose if you give it blood of Calador it becomes impetuous yeah but like you want it in combat anyway don't you I mean does it really matter whatever uh, and then we've got an archmage so he's maxing out his points on characters yeah it's interesting because I was, I was listening to a thing the other day where, where somebody was saying that um, you know we, we, we've, there's too many points allowed to be spent on characters in this edition of the game and <clears throat> I think that's possibly true because all the lists I'm looking at I mean this is this is anecdotal I haven't done the analysis but of all the lists I've looked at um the ones that get towards the top of the top of the table are the ones that are very character heavy um characters seem to do better than units like combat res doesn't beat characters universally <clears throat> at the moment but you know maybe that's something that empire can have a good go at okay so we've got level uh also archmage is also on a dragon by the way so we've got an archmage on a dragon with a dragon slaying sword which is a uh, monster slayer thing is it dragon slay oh no it's the generic it's the generic one. I think it just give does give monster slay, doesn't it? Uh why? But there's only one attack. Unless he's doing that thing where he thinks that the monster slayer conferred by the dragon slaying sword to the archmage confers also onto the moon dragon because of split profile. Which there is an argument that that's effective, right? I, I know some people disagree with it, but split profile rule, as has been discussed in a previous video, is totally broken. And just makes no sense. Um, it's not that it's broken from a gameplay perspective because everybody can manipulate it. However, it's just dumb. <coughs> because, you know, what you don't want is just dragon hammer. Like, it's just boring. Just loads of dragons just running around killing everything and then dragons smashing into each other and not really getting anywhere. 
Like, it's just boring. Um, he's got the Sea Guard, sensible choice, some Silver Helms. Again, perfectly sensible. I quite like them. He's got some High Elf Archers. This is all good. This is all good. No Illyrian Reavers. The, the, the guy has a brain. Illyrian Reavers are awful. Um, they've just got no armor and they don't do anything. Uh, they can't do anything in combat. Their shooting's woeful. Like, I just don't see the point of Illyrian Reavers. Um, they're very pretty, but that's it. And he's got some Dragon Princes. I really like Dragon Princes. I know people whinge about them being impetuous, but, and this is something I really liked about GW in this edition of The Old World. When they were writing the rules for Dragon Princes, there's a there's a commentary on one of the Warhammer Community articles about specifically making a comment about this, and they say, "Oh, we keep getting criticised for Dragon Princes because you know, impetuous. It makes them really difficult to play with." And we're like, "Yeah, but in every single description of the Dragon Princes in the narrative, they've been described as haughty, arrogant, impetuous. Like it, it's in their DNA. We can't not give them the impetuous keyword." But and here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, they have they have indeed made them very cheap for what they are because of impetuous. Like thirty seven points for that kit bag is you know, that's really, really good. They're the same points cost as a standard Chaos Warrior, as a standard Chaos Knight, more or less. Um <clears throat> but they've got full plate armour. So they've got an extra point of armour, which, you know, a two plus save is a lot better than a three plus save. The jump from like 3 plus to 2 plus takes out so much more damage than the jump from like 4 plus to 3 plus. Um, and they've got the Rampaging Banner, which I think is the Frenzy one, isn't it? I think I think he's just lent into the fact that they're going to have to charge, which is like, I think that's right. Which is, if that's what it is, then he's absolutely got the right idea. Like, you know, that's their weakness. Turn it into a strength. Make them frenzied. Because I know they're going to have to charge. I don't have to faff about worry, considering, oh, do they... Now, I've said all this, and it's probably not that at all. Um, where's the bloody magic items? Book's too long. Magic items. Magic standard. Rampaging banner. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> but actually... <laughs> idiot. Where's the frenzy banner? Oh, it's not a generic one, is it? Oh, there's a Bretonia frenzy banner... Right, right, right. So there's a Bretonia frenzy. So it may re-roll its charge roll. Yeah. Oh, why has he done that? I, uh, <clears throat> I think he's done that. So if they get baited out by something that's just going to run away from combat, um, he's got more of a chance of catching it or redirecting into something useful. But... Mm -hmm. I'm not sure... Yeah. Do High Elves really not have a Frenzy banner? Because they really should. No, they don't. Banner of Valyrian, I think, might be a bit more useful for them. Because Move Through covers actually quite a bit better than... Although I suppose they don't really need half of that ability. Cause, so one of it is you get to re-roll... If you've got Move Through cover, I think, you get to re-roll Dangerous Terrain tests that you fail... Which is what um, Ithilmar Barding does for you, so they already get to re-roll. If that's if that's true, <coughs> special rules, F R M. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that move through cover does do that, but Ithilmar Barding also does that. So, but this, I, you know, I, there's nothing remarkably weird about this list. There's a, there's a, there's a. On, nigh unkillable dragon here. There's a level four wizard on another dragon, <coughs> on a cheaper dragon. And um, then a decent block of sea guard. There's a decent block of other bits. There's some, you know, there's some shadow warriors. There's some great eagles for march blocking and stuff like that. So it's a pretty good list. I quite like that. <coughs> right. Moving on to second placed Jack Cropper with his great brave shaman. Shaman, 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 shaman. Um, and uh, he's on a chariot. Oh, genius. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, okay. Um, there's a lot going on here that makes this really, really super good. So uh, the hag tree fetish is just nuts, right? Uh, what do I need? I need evils. 
just to show you the rule read the rule to you and then you'll hopefully it'll start to click if you've not come across the hag tree fetish already uh whenever the bearer of a hag tree fetish successfully casts a magic missile they may re-roll any failed rolls to wound okay so re-rolling rolls to wound is amazing anyway but and this applies to magic missiles he's on a chariot so he's got 360 uh, line of sight and fire arc um <clears throat> He's also quicker than your average boy because he's on a chariot. Uh, chariots are a bit quicker than legs. Um, now, one of the laws... Is it elementalism? Is it that one? Where's the magic... There's one magic missile that's absolutely fantastic for this. Um, what laws can I take? What? the hell is it there's one law in particular that does like 3d6 strength to hits <coughs> no armor saves something like that uh is it dark magic doom bolt no not that uh, 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 uh. or is it one of the it could be one of the law of beasts things Vile Tide. That's it. It's right here. <laughs> this is specific to Beastman, right? 5d6, strength 1 hits, no armor saves. Rerolling. So 5d6, on average, <coughs> you're going to get like 20 hits. You get to roll 20 dice. Uh, do you get, on average, 20 hits? 7, 14, and 3.5, so 17. Let's say 18 hits. 18 hits. I mean, obviously, you could spike it and get 30, but that's really rare. But 18-ish hits. Um, so you get to roll 18 dice. Six is just kill. Um, you do get ward and regen, but six is just kill. Uh, and you know sixes on everything apart from anything that's i think toughness seven <coughs> so a nurgle no 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 shut up dan anyway so six is just 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 kill so you get to roll 18 dice you probably roll three sixes you then get to roll 15 dice because you've got the hag tree fetish and probably get another three sixes so that's just six dead things six dead things a turn it's a reliable way of getting six wounds, however, on stuff like dragons. So that's enough to half kill a dragon. It's enough to kill a giant. Just one spell. 15-inch range, cast on an eight. Easy to cast. Good long range. You're already on a chariot. Absolutely fantastic. There's a lot going on there. <coughs> Potion of foolhardiness. I forget what that does. Uh, that's in the main rule book, isn't it? Uh, is it? Is it an enchanted item? That's where all the potions are. Full hardiness. I mean, psychology. It had five points spare, basically. Um, is what happened there. Not spent a lot on characters. That's not even the general. The general's a doom bull with... Um, yeah, pretty good stat line. Ogre blade, blackened plate. Um, ogre blade is basically multiple wounds and generally quite good you'll see the ogre blade a lot it's basically just a massive sword like um thingy from final fantasy um what was I looking up <laughs> where's the fish um oh God, i need more coffee uh black and plate that's what i was looking up black and plate uh, I really also should have cleared my throat properly before starting pressing record or had anything to drink this morning. Anyway. Blackened plate, is it? Yeah, blackened plate. Yeah, three plus ward against flame. Yeah, uh, th this is great. So it's a full plate armor, so you get your four up save from that. You also get a three plus ward against flaming attacks. There's loads of stuff that has flaming attacks in this game. And I said this when I went through Beastman. I think you'll see this quite a lot because it's cheap. And actually, there's a lot of stuff that's got flaming attacks that this can be absolutely just astronomically good against. <coughs> 
So I think you'll you'll see the black and plate a lot, especially on a Doom Bull. Absolute genius. And he's got the enchant yeah, the Enchanted Shield and so he's got a six at ward from the Enchanted Shield anyway. He's got the Ogre Blade, he's got uh gnarled uh height so these are where are the mutations? Gnarled hide gets armored hide at one so actually ah oh, oh oh who's written this list? I, I Jack, I love you. This is great. Um <laughs> you should have won the whole thing. Um, so he's got down to like a two up save with a with a minor talk. He's got the enchanted shield as well. He's oh, this is so well written. Well, the characters are so far. It's really really good. Um, so he's got the ogre blade, which is the expensive one, um, which is armor bane one. Looks, it's basically a great weapon. Doesn't strike last. Does multiple wounds. D three. Right. That's basically what it is. It's fantastic. It's so aggressive. <coughs> The other one you see quite a bit is Giant Blade, because it does multiple wounds too. So this is quite good for killing for killing characters. Um, the other one that's pretty good is uh, Sword of Might. is is okay. It's basically a halberd with magic magic attacks, but it doesn't require two weapons. And then he's gone for the Enchanted Shield, so it's a shield. So he's got you know he's got a character that can't equip a shield with a shield, right? Um, and I really hope he's modelled it because oh, yeah, six at ward by non-magical enemy attack that's oh, non-magical okay just pretty i mean that you want to spend the 10 points for the plus one save because it's a, it's a it's a it's a shield right um although arguably like the charm shield might be better because if he gets hit by killing blow he could have a have a crack at that couldn't he but yeah uh, gores, Tusk Gore times three. Yeah, Tusk Gore chariots are great. Razor Gores are fantastic. They're also war beasts, uh, multiple wound war beasts, so they have a unit strength of one. Uh, and I forget why that's good, but it is good for some reason. Um, <laughs> it's got some dragon ogres, which are great. I would have gone for three singles, but yeah, and harpies are fantastic just to like flap down behind enemy units that you're about to charge. So that essentially you've you've got your block, you've got your block there, you flap your harpies down behind it, you smack it in the front with something that's definitely gonna push it back, which is gonna pop it through the harpies, which means they've all got to take um take tests on a I think on a four up they survive, so it's half of the unit just disappears because there's fifty five point unit of harpies behind it. Absolutely brilliant. Well done, well done, well done, well done. And two Gorkins just to round it all out. I really like this list. I really like that. Um, I yeah, Dark Elves. Right, what have we got here? We've got a Dreadlord, full plate shield, sea dragon cloak. So he's down to like he's got full plate, full plate twice, two full plate. Um, but yes, so that's a four up, three up, two up against shooting. Um, it's got the, again, see the ogre blade, <coughs> talisman of protection, which is just a five at ward. That's a pretty good dragon. Um, I mean, Dark Elves, you kind of want the wizard, level 4 wizard on the dragon. Um, yeah, which he's got on a dark steed. You kind of want the level 4, because the, the dragon's breath attack is so good, you could just have it for that. It doesn't need to get into combat to get his points back. Strength 4, no armor saves, breath weapon, just fantastic. Uh, he's got a master, so he can wind up the dragon, basically. Um, the master does... I'll show you what the master does. He's got a really cool ability that... Uh, there's no bookmarks, is there? Obviously, there are no bookmarks. There are no bookmarks in this document. Goad beasts. During the command phase, go to blah, 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 blah. So you put the beast master near the dragon, uh, give it D3 attacks. <laughs> Um, whose troop type is monster yeah uh, yeah just d3 attacks That's what, including their own mount may go to see like it's not clear it could apply to the rider I mean no it doesn't obviously but I mean oh, whatever um, 
so we've got a master, you got a supreme, so you've got the, the master. I oh, know, master. It's not a beast master, is it? Idiot Dan. Idiot Dan. Why has he got a. Oh, he's got. It's just a battle standard bearer. So he's not got that to wind up the dragon. Ignore everything I just said about that. Um, <laughs> then he's got um, a big block of warriors. Dark riders are good. I like dark riders. They're, you know, they, they do. They're way better than Illyrian Reavers. Um, they have a lot more utility. Um. Then we got uh, because they've got repeated crossbows, which do which you know repeated crossbows are good, um, way better than the piddly bows that Illyrian Reavers have. I hate Illyrian Reavers. Um, then we have got some blackguards. It's it's spelt blackguard, right? But that's where the word blackguard comes from. Blackguard. It's just a sort of a truncation, or is it no a concatenation? I think is the word of the words blackguard. So. They're pronounced Blagard, right? Anyway, Blagards of Nagarond. Uh, he's got 11 of them. They're, they're all right. Cold One Knights, I really rate. I think they're really good. And he's got some Harpies to do the drop down and, you know, all the, the stuff that I've just talked about. He's also got some Dark Riders can do that quite well as well. Uh, and he's got a Charybdis, which they're okay. Um, I'm not sure. The, they're, I think they're worth a few, like, 160, 170 points, but... 200 seems a bit much for them, but yeah, I mean, this is a pretty good list. Uh, this just shows, actually, that actually, it's not, it's a pretty standard list for Dark Elves, so Hugo's obviously very good at this game, firstly. Um, secondly, it just shows that with a fairly standard uh, Dark Elf list, you can do quite well. Um, and then finally, Warriors of Chaos, who I think, if they're not on the top of the meta, probably will be after this weekend, but we'll have a look at that in a second. Darren Watson, who's gone magic heavy. Uh, Darren's a lovely bloke, very good Warhammer, uh, as you can tell, because he's just won a five-game tournament. Um, and you've got uh, Demon Prince with level four, Marcus Inch, Ruby, Ruby Ring of Ruin, Law Familiar, so he gets to pick his spells. He's going. He's gone for battle magic, presume... Oh, I don't know why he's gone for battle magic, actually. Buff up defensive stats, maybe, or just do some more. I suppose it flies around, doesn't it? And it's just going to generate a load of magic missiles, isn't it? He's just created like a little war machine for 500 points called Demon Prince. Um, he's got a Sorcerer Lord level 4, Exalted Sorcerer, Battle Standard Bearer. So he's maxed out characters. Yes, maxed out characters. Then in the core units, he's got four uh, Knights of Nurgle. They're there to just take a hit. Although he's given them lances, so he's like he's he's hoping to get a charge off at least. Then he's got twenty one warriors who have the mark of Zinch, which gives them flaming weapons, uh magic resistance one, and um if you stick a Zinch wizard in there, as long as this has a unit strength of ten or more, then they get plus one to cast. So presumably that's where this sorcerer maybe maybe both the sorcerers go in there. Has he put one of those on foot. Yeah, they're both on foot, so they can both go in there. He's given them the Skull of Katam, which I think is a pretty good artifact, but I can't remember exactly what it does. So I'll just have a quick look at that. Arcane. Uh, plus one to casting. Yeah. And any other wizard. Yeah, so they're both going in the unit, aren't they? That's what he's done. Oops. Oh, for God's sakes. Right. So, yeah, they're both going in the Zinch unit. So, basically, these two will be next to each other um, in this unit. So, uh, with, near the Skull of Katam. So, essentially, the unit confers on them plus one to cast. And the Skull of Katam will give them a further plus one to cast. So, they're, they're going to be casting six spells at plus two to cast. So, that's pretty good. All battle magic. He's gone all battle magic. What? Oh... Oh, I see what he's done. <laughs> oh, it's disgusting. Um, <laughs> this this is how it won. Right? <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Um, what has he done? Yeah, fireball. Yeah, just just. So okay. So you got the Zinch spell. Um, which they'll both have because they can just pick it. Where's the bloody spells? Law of Chaos. Here we go. D6 plus 3, strength 4 hits, AP 2, and flaming. So uh, three of those are going to come out you every single turn. <coughs> uh, 
uh, some two of them with uh, one of them with yeah two of them with plus four to cast. So one of them is going to be the demon prince who gets plus four because of his level. The other one that's plus four is the level two wizard, but because of Katam and the unit, it goes up to plus four. Uh, and then one of them with plus six. So there's almost certainly going to be three of those hitting you every turn. Um, so that's pretty good. Then, because he's gone for battle magic, he can more or less just castle up. Because <laughs> if he gets... You know, he gets Oaken Shield, so that's a five at Ward, which is, you know, pretty good. Um, Curse of Cowardly Flight, he can make you fall back. Pillar of Fire to control the battlefield, which is, you know, okay. Um, Curse of Arrow Attraction, you don't really need, so this will get swapped out for Zinch spells if he gets rolled, if he rolls it. Fireball is great, 2d6 strength 4 hits, in addition to d6 plus 3 strength 4 AP2 hits. Um... And uh, you can make a unit move twice with this conveyance, uh, which uh, is just target-friendly unit. So he's got a giant, I think, hasn't he? Uh, a Dragon Ogre Shagoth. So he can punt that Dragon Ogre Shagoth up the field. Uh, which is, you know, pretty pretty nasty. Pretty nasty. Not fleeing if and has already moved. Yeah. So you can march a unit twice with that. Um... And he's got some Dragon Ogres to basically control the battlefield. So, essentially, he's just going to castle up with this unit of warriors. Everything else will be sort of running around trying to kill off small units. All the while, you've just got this absolutely deathly barrage of nonsense coming from all the magic. So, really good list. It's disgusting. Well done, Darren. <laughs> um, yeah, and Darren is a is a is a very good warhammerist in general so you know a very good warhammerist with a very good list that does one job extremely well it's just brilliant it's just brilliant uh and can you give shagoths magic items have i missed a trick here bloody hell you can oh <laughs> oh i quite like two dragon ogres and a shagoth actually Oh, mmm, mmm, mmm. I like this Shagoth in particular. It's very good. Uh, the reason I like it is because of all the stuff it's got. <laughs> so it's got heavy armor. It's got a charmed shield, which means, which is the one that's just a shield. You know, it's five points, isn't it? So he's got, I think the Shagoth has armored hide t uh, two. So heavy armor and armored hide two. Plus the cheap shield for five points means it's got a two-up save, basically, against shooting. Um, what, wep uh, what weapon has he given it? He's given it uh, just a hand weapon, but he's also given it gouge tusks and many... So he's given it the talisman of protection, so it's got a two-up save, basically. He's got a five-up ward. Uh, he's given it the biting blade and many-limbed fiend. So he's got the tusks. Where are the tusks? Gouge tusks. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> it just gets extra AP. <laughs> it gets plus one attack. Made using an ordinary hand weapon. Um. I mean, okay. <laughs> um. I'm not sure that's worth 20 points, to be honest, because it's just, uh, to me, it's just an extra bit of faff. Um, yes. so, sorry, I stopped looking for things. and uh, We're describing what this thing does. Um, yeah, so it's got AP, and because he's got the Biting Blade, which I think is like AP2 or something anyway. Um, oh, where the hell is it? Uh, magic Weapons. Biting blade, biting blade, AP two, armor bane two. So it's already got a pretty good strength anyway, hasn't it? It's already like strength six or something. Uh, where's Shagoth? Yeah, so it's already strength six. So it's got five attacks basically. At strength six, AP 
three. <laughs> and he's got a shield, so he's got a, basically a t- he's basically made Kragnos. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i just really don't like the model but um oh, i might have to buy one now because <laughs> that's just nuts it's so disgusting it's brilliant uh well done darren you have inspired me to buy a shagoth <laughs> even though i really don't like the model <laughs> but that is just insanely good Right, anyway, um, so that's that's that. So that's, that's Squarebase GT. Darren won with his disgusting Shagoth. Um, right, so what we're we doing? We're looking... Well, let's have a look at some data and see how that's, that's shaped things up. So we need to click refresh on this. And somebody said, oh, should we get this in a decent format? And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to, but, you know, uh, time. Okay, so... The win. So, uh, just to explain what I've done here, I've I've done th- these these colours are the results of some statistical tests. All right. So here we're looking at win rank. So that is essentially the percentage wins you get, how factions rank up. We've got a reliability rank, which is this thing called standard deviation. So this this uh, this figure win percentage plus or minus this figure is what a normal player should get so lizardmen at the moment should get a win uh, if they go into a tournament they're winning somewhere between 92 and uh 28 percent of their games okay so the bigger this standard deviation figure is the uh the less reliable the factions results have been so far the lower the percentage, the better, really, because that means that the faction's pretty reliable. Now, Dark Elves are the most reliable. They win two out of three games, or pretty consistently. Um, that I'd argue that that's you know that's not not a good thing for game balance. But anyway, we'll we'll explore that in a second. So you've got a win rank, you've got a reliability rank, and then we've got a position rank. So where they relate where they end up in tournaments there it will not surprise you to discover that the win percentage and the position in tournaments is more or less the same is 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 kind of the same result uh however this does show up discrepancies in that wood elves are in the top third of win percentages but uh, in the middle pack in terms of tournament position so they're good at winning games they're just not good at Essentially, I'd I'd imagine they're not good at. Is it grinding out draws that makes them? No, they're better at drawing. They're just not good in tournaments for some reason. They don't do they don't do as well as Bretonians do in tournaments, despite winning slightly more games. As a percentage, um, again, there's not really a lot of data here. You really want like this this count of players. So this is how many armies have been entered basically with these factions. As soon as all of these hit 30, I'm pretty confident these stats... I, I would be confident these stats are right. However, um, there are some factions that that don't really have that 30, that 30 at the moment. You know, Beastmen are getting close. Uh, Dark Elves are getting there. Lizardmen, nobody's really taking them at the moment, which is annoying. Somebody take more Lizardmen to tournaments, please. Uh, Deems of Chaos, Chaos Dwarves, Skaven, Ogre Kings and Vampire Counts. We need to get some more results from them, really, um, before... Oh, I should definitely do Demons, really, for my tournament next... Oh, it's only next... Anyway, shut up, Dan. Um, I should have got a tournament, I think, this weekend. 5th and 6th. That'll be this weekend, won't it? Um, at uh, the um, at Rob Symes' place. Square Base GT3, which is the only one I've managed to book on for <laughs> before all the tickets sold out. Um I think I'm going to take Warriors of Chaos though, because I've got the army all done, and if I get busy this week at work, I can, um, you know, just take them. <coughs> I'm not going to risk it. But yeah, so Warriors of Chaos are one of the most popular factions, as are Bretonia, uh, as are Orcs and Goblins. Uh, but anyway, sorry, back to explaining this. I'm getting distracted by other stats. So if you've got three green figures here that means that you're in the top so statistically it's easy to say who is outside the norm at the top and who is outside the norm at the bottom 
and what does normal look like in terms of a normal army. Really what you want is the green in the win rank column, you want it to be a third, a third, a third, right? Because uh, that means that uh, everything's pretty even or getting towards even. Um, that's there's a, there's a few factions that are doing well and there are uh, the, the pack as it were is these uh right, let's get rid of that so you can see more of it so essentially the the factions that are doing well are that are doing averagely we've got orcs and goblins chaos dwarves demons and high elves so high elves were doing really badly last time some good results this time have brought them up uh, these are the factions that are doing pretty well in terms of win percentages. You know, they're winning half or more of their games, basically. So that's the that's the sort of determinant here. And these factions are doing badly. They kind of so in actual fact, the statistics. What it's done is it's shown that anybody less than forty percent are in the bottom. Anybody greater than fifty are in the top. And those between 30, forty to fifty percent win rate are the sort of the pack which makes sense because draws are definitely a thing like there's a lot of draws happening in uh, the old world way more than ever used to happen in age of sigma so you know with draws being quite a quite a thing um getting a sub 50 percent win rate is pretty pretty um standard i mean this is what you'd expect uh for a normal faction to be you know uh winning so so actually the statistics are providing answers that you know you'd probably you'd probably expect so uh yes so weirdly the reliability rank sometimes is a bad thing because being reliably crap as our ogre kingdoms are is um not a good thing so they're they're in the bottom tier for in terms of win percentages they're top tier of reliability, so they're reliably winning no games. And they actually don't tend to end up towards the bottom of tournaments. They're doing okay in tournaments, despite being reliably crap. So there's something weird going on with Ogres, and I don't know what it is, but that's you know, it's probably a statement that you could always make. Um, whereas at the top, oh, Lisbon haven't really got that many results, so that doesn't really count. Wood Elves, again, are one of the least reliable factions. They're winning games, but they're all over the place in terms of results. So, again, there's a lot of... Basically, what this means is that there's a, they're pretty good overall. However, nobody can agree on how they should play as a faction, which is arguably a good thing. <clears throat> Reliably mid are the Demons of Chaos, but again, there's not a lot of results. So, that this, they, this these, these are called parametric tests. These parametric tests are not particularly great if there's not a lot of data. Um, but yeah, as you can see, uh, we've got some factions that are doing really well. Um, this one in particular is a bit dark elves is a bit worrying because it's top of all. Um, I'm as is Britonia. Britonia, I, I thought just looked really balanced because it's like between essentially twenty seven to seventy seven percent win rate is normal. I mean, all of that looks okay, but then again, considering draws and stuff, they just don't. You know, they basically Bretonians tend to not draw. They tend to, um, you know, if it's going to be a draw, they'll tend to win. So, Bretonia are a bit too good at the moment. Uh, Team Kings of Kemri were a bit too good last week, but a few bad results for them has really brought them down to being fairly average. Actually, Team Kings are looking pretty balanced at the moment. Um, yeah. Uh, the the good thing is there's no faction with a decent chunk of results like Warriors of Chaos that are absolutely barnstorming it. Like they they're not there's not you know, there's no massive kind of you know, if you remember, you know, a few years ago within Age of Sigma, like you used to have like Daughters of Cain winning like eighty, ninety percent win rates pretty standardly. And, you know, um Disciples of Zinch went through a period where they did that. You know, so anyway, so that's the the the, the meta at the moment. Um, once we get a bit more data, we can start to do like some graphs about how stuff changes over time, which will be pretty cool to see how some factions rise and fall. 
Uh, and we've got Orcs and Goblins, their actual book coming out next week. So as soon as that's available on digital, I'll buy it and uh, we can go through it and write some lists. Um, over this week, what have I got planned content-wise? Um, no, shut up, Dan. That's the, we don't need to do that. Oh, I've closed the bloody browser already, haven't I? Absolute moron. I was going to talk to you about what events are coming up. Oh, go away. I would say allow, but it asks you that question every time. So it's just in protest of, you know, the fact that it bugs me. I'm going to say that's enough. <laughs> uh, April. Da, da. So uh, there's an old world tournament in uh, Sofia. Is that Poland? Where's Sofia? God, my geography. I apologise. I apologise. Bulgaria. I knew it wasn't Poland. So we've got a tournament in Bulgaria. Oh, it says BG there. I should have guessed, idiot. Uh, I'm at this one, which will be pretty cool. Um, <coughs> I think I am. I need to check my tickets, really. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, if I'm not, I can go and play rugby. But anyway... Um, uh, you've got Ancient Evils, uh, which is being run by Tom somewhere in the UK. Uh, five people signed up so far. Uh, Onslaught in Dublin. There's a lot of spaces left, it seems. Uh, there's one in Leamington. Yeah, I like Leamington. It's a nice place. It's got a friend who lives there. Um, square bases are back. All right. <laughs> it's just all right. Nice. Um Hobby chest first Warhammer. That's a twelve fifty. But still, these small tournaments are actually quite interesting to go to, just to like try stuff out. Especially if you've only got a few models built, they're pretty good. Um, and normally they're quite a lot of fun because people there, you know, it's not a proper two K tournament. It's like a you know, um, the two K tournaments are the ones to watch. They tend to get quite competitive because it's like two K is the standard. Um, but whatever. Uh, then we've got Wizards Alley, which is going off in the States. Brian Hunter's running that one. Uh, there's quite a lot going on, really, isn't there? There's a tournament going on in the Netherlands. There's one in Italy. There's one in Spain. There's another one in America, 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 America. So there's quite a lot going on in the States. That, but we've got Italy, Spain, Ireland. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh bulgaria australia so there's loads of tournaments going off all over the world uh for the old world next weekend which we can cover next week but anyway i've waffled on for far too long as usual and uh, i hope this has been uh interesting if uh you know you're at this stage and you're still watching you should probably subscribe <laughs> um and if you like the video there is there is indeed a button to express your how much you've liked the video you can put a thumbs down as well if you like which is fun uh, nothing happens by the way they're just both engagement which is why some people post uh, uh i was looking at a video on youtube the other day some like so if when when you've got a channel like you have like a back end and they do videos for content creators and basically one of them watched the other day was like don't worry about engagement just get any <laughs> like some people post ridiculously awful videos uh, but it's engagement. You're getting people to watch the channel. You're getting people to use YouTube. So we're okay with that. Um, <laughs> or something like that. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. Um, <laughs> uh, it does affect the algorithm long term, though. Um, but Because uh, if all your videos always get a down vote, then, you know, uh, it doesn't mean they stop suggesting it to people. Um uh new beards new isn't the opposite to i don't get anyway uh what was i talking about oh yes i was saying goodbye wasn't i so i've done the like the video button thing um <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about dan um i don't know I, i'm turning it to gollum aren't i i need somebody to talk to like i can't talk to my i, I can talk to myself uh obviously because that's pretty much what these videos are it's just me rattling on at a bloody microphone and us some people are apparently watching for some god unknown reason <laughs> um 
but you know, I've, I caught myself watching one of my own videos the other day, which is really sad, just to check that I hadn't said something inflammatory because uh, I thought I had, but then I couldn't remember when I said it, so I had to watch the bloody thing um, <laughs> to find out whether I had, and I hadn't, which was lucky. Um, anyway, what am I actually talking about? I don't know. I'm just going to say goodbye. So toodaloo, uh, have a good weekend. Or oh, Easter, Easter is, is Easter, isn't it? I'm not religious at all. So, you know, I'm an atheist, really, uh, but um, a very quiet one. Like, I don't really, I don't really sort of, you know, I'm not, I'm not evangelical about it. I, you know, I just don't have time for that crap. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so Easter. I, 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 the reason I'm telling you that is because I forgot that it was Easter this weekend. Uh, even though there's a big pile of eggs in my kitchen for my kids, but I t typically tend to start buying them as soon as they're in supermarkets and just buy the occasional random egg that I like the look of, and it just ends up in the kitchen. And then somebody reminds me it's Easter because I turn up to work on a Friday, and you know there's nobody there, and then I'm like, "What's going on?" And then you know it's like, "Ah, uh, there's there's." Um, it must be one of those bank holiday things. And then I, you know, or, or my wife will remind me uh, just as I'm getting in my suit on a Friday morning. But, um, yeah, so I don't really... Uh, the thing is, like, when you don't have, like, any kind of religious markers, like, you don't... You forget about these things. Like, if the marketing behind Christmas... If Christmas... I think the other thing is, like, Christmas is, like, 25th of December, so it's the same every year, isn't it? Whereas, like, Easter moves around a bit, so I forget when it is. Um... You know, and I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a bugger for booking things and, you know, not considering the, the whole Easter paradox. But anyway, so happy Easter. Um, uh, if you if you are, uh, you know, uh, excited about Easter for religious reasons, good for you. He uh, he, he, he is indeed risen. Um, uh, you know, I don't say that in tongue in cheek. You know, if, if people who have religious beliefs, you know, they're, they're absolutely fine. You know, I, 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 you know, I don't, I don't have any beef with anybody about anything that they want to do in their own mind. That's totally down to you. Uh, so yeah, enjoy your your weekend um, uh, and uh, have a have a decent. Uh, well, in the, I suppose the other thing, like in the UK, we have these like bank holiday things, which are like national holidays, which I know other countries have as well. But we have like one on a Friday, and one on a Monday around Easter. So Easter is always the Sunday, and we have Friday, which is Good Friday, obviously, which was uh, a, a traditional marking of you know when 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 Jesus finally died um, after being crucified for a bit, um, and uh monday we always have off i don't really know why monday we always have off but we always have monday off traditionally as well so um that's that's uh and there's stuff that happens on easter like easter egg hunts they tend to be quite popular this weekend and um you know uh they tend to be organized by people more religious than me because like i said I, I would do one because they're quite a lot of fun but like i just forget i'm a bit rubbish at remembering things like that um yeah so yeah that's uh you know there'll be stuff going on at uh the church yesterday and today actually i think they do they do a special service on the monday um uh, i used to go to church a few years ago but you know mainly because my daughter really wanted to go um and uh you know i thought well i'll give it a go for her if that's what she wants then um you know i'm not going to get in the way of that so we went for a few years and then she got bored thankfully because you know it was it was quite trying um i even ran a sunday school really because you know i was brought up christian so i understand the script why am i talking about this is nothing to do with <laughs> Warhammer tournaments just telling you about my journey through religion for some reason anyway um it's probably not an uncommon journey through religion really um I think actually the reason I keep talking about it is because I've said something about it now and I just don't want to offend anybody unnecessarily. So, you know, whatever comments I make, they're always meant in the best possible, um, <laughs> with the best possible intentions. Uh, I like to make people happy rather than the obverse. So anyway, uh, I hope this has been useful. Uh, apologies for whiffling on at the end a bit about something irrelevant. Uh, but, you know, if you've 
watch me at all, you'll realise that's pretty par for the course. Anyway, I <laughs> hope you have a good Easter weekend or whatever you're doing, and um, toodaloo.